everybody. This is video number 56. We're going to talk about how heat is transferred in the earth. So your summary is going to be describe the three methods of heat transfer and list uh, where they are located in the earth and how heat is transferred. All right, so now we're going to actually apply them to your um, layers of the earth that we've been talking about. So we're going to go all the way down to the core and the very inner core. Miss Wayne, do you remember, is it a solid or a liquid, the inner core? That's a liquid. Maybe not. <laughs> This is why she fires me. <laughs> that was a good time. And you were thinking it was liquid because it was so hot. I was thinking of magnum and the lava and the stuff that comes out. Right. That's okay. Liquid. So this is actually even further down from that, and you get so much pressure that you can't actually move. Ah, uh, so, so that if it had more space, it would really be hot enough to be a liquid? If it had less pressure, it would be hot enough to be liquid, yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So inner core, remember, <laughs> is your solid one. Your outer core is that liquid one. Remember, that actually makes that um, whole magnetic field of the Earth, that kind of thing. Ah. So this is conduction, right? Conduction again. So if I'm the inner core and she's the outer core, I am transferring heat from hot to cold. Okay? All right, you want to do the next one? Uh, sure. Conduction is the outer core of the mantle. Conduction mm -hmm. means it has the direct contact again. The outer core touches the mantle. <laughs> And he is transferred. Right. So it's exactly the same. So you have two conduction points here. You have one from the inner to the outer core, and then you have one from the outer core to the mantle. So is most of the stuff in the earth, the heat transfer in the earth, has to be conduction since it, the layers touch each other? Yes. Mo most of it, yes. Okay. You'll see. The next layer is not. Okay. So this is where it gets weird. So if you're going to have trouble someplace, this is where it's going to be. So this is happens in the mantle. So you have the outer core here that's really hot. And you have to think of like a pot on the stove. So if you're in a pot on the stove and you're the little water molecules and you're really close to the bottom, you get really stinking oh, hot, okay. right? You yep. get really stinking hot. And where do you go? You go, oh my gosh, I'm hot. And you rise to the top, right? And you go, yeah. oh, it's nice and cool up here. That's exactly the same thing that happens here. So you go the outer core, you go, woo, rocks, I'm hot, I'm hot. You rise to the top towards the crust where it's much cooler. And then you get cooled and you go, ha, I feel good again. And you sink back down and you start that whole process all over again. So is the mantle the only part that's actually a liquid in the earth? It is what's considered sort of a soft solid. Or remember we use the word like taffy. It pulls like taffy. Okay. It's still technically a solid. It's just hot enough that you can flex and bend it. So it's not a true liquid. It's like a semi-solid okay. kind of a layer. A solid that flows may seem strange, but the mobility of the mantle is vital to life on Earth. Because currents of heat circulate upwards from the core through the mantle, the plates of the crust can move around on the surface. Without this shifting geology, there'd be no continents, and the conditions for life would never have existed. Without these zones in the mantle that allow the plates to move across the Earth's surface, we would basically have a geologically dead planet. We would have no plate movement, we would have no mountain ranges, we would have no major ocean basins. So the mantle is absolutely critical. It happens because hot rock rises, heated by the Earth's core. Near the surface, the rock spreads in two directions and goes sideways. It begins to lose heat. Eventually, the much cooler rock sinks back down. Through this spreading process, the Earth's crust is very slowly dragged apart. And it's this that ultimately causes the continents to move. All right. You want to do radiation again? You did it last time. So. I did it Okay. Yeah. So radiation, the sun to the Earth. So radiation needs no contact. That's right. The sun doesn't touch the Earth, Miss Whitney. Not so much. No. That would be bad. <laughs> Very bad. Of course, I'm complaining about how cold it is. I'd like it to be a little closer. Right. Anyway, so the sun warms the Earth. Yeah. And the transfer of heat energy is the weather and the climate. That's right. Which Hence, right now is cold. Really thinking cold. I'm tired of being cold. <laughs> All right, so sorry. Do you like my joke? This I do joke. like your Come joke. Come on, that's funny. <laughs> She's so corny. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good. All right, so I'll do the first one. You do the last one, okay? Right. So we need you guys to please make sure you can describe those three methods of heat transfer that we reviewed from sixth grade and... And then you also need to list the method and location where heat is transferred in or on the earth. So that's all the different layers of the earth you need to be able to describe... Um, the method and how it's transferred. Exactly. Ta-da!